Welcome back YouTube, welcome to another video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to retrofit Brembo calipers onto a Mark V Golf. Um, as you can see, I have already done it. Unfortunately, I'd already done this brake version before I decided to start a YouTube channel. But what I will do is I'm going to take it out. We'll take it outside. We'll have some close up of all the brakes so you can see what they look like. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to put it on the ramp. We'll take the wheels off and I'll go through everything so it should answer any questions or any way you might get stuck about it. We'll go into it. We'll go through. The fronts are pretty easy to do. To be honest, there's plenty of videos out there and enough information to work it out. I'll still go over it anyway. But one of the bigger ones is the rear. There's not as much info out there for the rear and you do come across some problems with like the um, ABS sensors. Also, it is different on the back depending on what you've got. It's a lot easier to do it on the back if you've not got four wheel drive. But obviously this being an R32, this is four wheel drive. So I have done the four wheel drive so conversion, so I'll take you through that. Um, but yeah, what these are is, these are, well the front are Brembo 18Z. You can also get 17Z, which are exactly the same, except for the piston size is slightly different. You can fit either, I would recommend 18Z over the 17Z, just because the piston starts more like it's easy for the master cylinder. Unless you're upgrading the master cylinder, then it don't matter. Um, I did order an RS3 master cylinder when I was, I fit the fronts first, then when I couldn't do the rears, I was worried that the master wouldn't handle it. So I did order an RS3 one, but guess what, I ran main dealer, no stop, no ETA, back order, never ending back order basically. Um, I've now had an RS3 slash TTRS master cylinder on order for two, two, three months now. Um, still no ETA, so whether I'll get it. But luckily, when I put it back on, I find it all right. There is an edit a slightly spongy bit at the top, but with how sharp the brakes are, I actually find that to be quite nice because when you get to the right point, it is quite sharp and just kind of jolt a little bit. So I feel like that sponginess, when you get used to it, it feels perfect, it breaks amazing. So yeah, I can't really complain about that. Um, I'll take you through other stuff. Obviously you can see the OEM calipers there, you have to keep that for a handbrake. Again, I'll go through that when it gets closer. But yeah, for now, let's take it outside. We'll have a look around it and then we'll get back to it. So yeah, let's get it. Right, so you've seen your close-ups, you've seen all the pictures, seen what they look like on the car, now I'm gonna take you through how to fit them. Uh, for a start off, before we go into it, I will say you need spacers. Even with the OEM, these are 10 mil spacers, and even with the OEM wheels, I don't think that'll be enough. Obviously, I've got Sparco, a set of Gara wheels, that have got a better offset, and even with these 10 mil spacers, it's only just enough. So just beware that you cannot put these on with OEM wheels unless you go for a bigger spacer. How much of a spacer you need on OEM wheels, I'm not too sure. For my wheels, it was a 10 mil spacer. Right, then let's go through what is needed to do. First off, you need a fitting kit. What you'll get in the fitting kit 
is you'll get a spigot ring. The reason you need the spigot ring is because this is a Mercedes disc. This is off a ML350 CDI. I believe in America it's a petrol one, so it depends where you're coming from. Um, if you're struggling to find it, you can Google it and find the part number. If you get if you struggle, drop it down in the comments and I'll and I'll basically find the part number for you and I'll send it over. So yeah, you need a Mercedes disc, you get this spigot ring. Basically, the stud pattern of the Mercedes disc is exactly the same as this, except for the hub is slightly bigger. This bigot ring works just like a one for a wheel. You just put it over the hub, you slide the disc over the top, and all it does is fill the gap so it's not, it's not floating as such. So yeah, you put the spigot ring on, put the disc on, that's that bit sorted. Then what else you need is you need high tensile nut bolt and sleeve, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, so we'll bypass that for a second. And then you need a hell braid, well, it doesn't have to be hell, either hell or Goodridge braided line. That, that we, you'll all get in the kit. So if we spin this round, and I'll get, get up close. Right, so basically you've got your, you've got your hell braided line. Just goes over to the normal fitting. And then what you've got round here is, you've got your two, your two bolts. And then I don't know how well you can see, but the nuts are down the back. Um, and yeah, that, that is basically all you need to do the job. But I would do it in a certain order, just because it can be a little bit awkward to the nuts. When you're fitting the calipers, don't put the pads in. Push the pistons all the way back, don't put the pads in. You want to put the disc on, but leave the disc loose. And then what you want to do is, it just allows you to cock the disc a little bit. Put, put the nut down, down the back and then push the bolt through into the nut and spin it. Just because you haven't got much room, it just makes life a lot, lot easier. Once you've got the nut on, top and bottom, just tighten it all up. Once you've tightened it all up, then put your, put your pads in. Um, your disc will not bolt on anymore just because obviously it's a Mercedes disc so it don't line up. That doesn't matter at all because when you bolt your wheel up, um, it, it sandwiches it anyway, so it's not really important. But yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. So just obviously beware, like I said, with the spacers, you don't want to put your wheel on and catch it because not only will you knacker the, 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 the nice calipers, especially if you've just had them refurbed, um, you will also probably damage your wheel as well. So just beware, do a test fit, don't push it all the way on, just go close and just make sure. You can even try and put something on to protect it. But yeah, just, just be careful. You do have to get the right spaces. You can't just run them as they are. So yeah, all you need is your, your Mercedes disc, your spigot ring, high tensile nut and bolt with the sleeve. The sleeve is just because the, the hole is slightly different. So it basically fills the hole out a bit like the, the spigot ring does. And then your braided line and that, and that is it. That's all you need to fit it. The braided line for the front can also be used on the back. That's what I did. It is a little bit long, but we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, let's flip round and we'll do the back. Right, so this is the rear brake caliper setup. Uh, this is it's pretty simple in terms of what you actually need. You don't really need an awful lot to do this one. Uh, the main thing you need is the Epitech bracket, which is the, the nuts, bolts, the bracket, everything. It is a little bit pricey for what it is, but that's pretty much the only thing you need. Disc-wise, this is a stock R32 disc. I'm pretty sure maybe if you've got a GTR or something, you might have to upgrade. I'm not too sure on all the, the disc sizes, but the Mark V R32 rear disc is what fits. So all you need is a Mark V R32 rear disc. This one's drilled, it's a Brembo disc. I just did this because I wanted it to match the front. You do not have to do this. You can, you can just use a completely stock R32 disc. You don't need no spigot rings, nothing like that. This is just the OEM caliper as it is. You don't need nothing special with that. You just want some pads in it because this is the mechanical handbrake. You need to keep this in place for the handbrake. And not only that, the bracket at the back for where this caliper mounts works off the pad carrier for this one. So you do need to keep it in place, not only for the bracket, but for your handbrake as well. Braided line wise, this is exactly the same one as the front. It is a little bit long on the back. I couldn't find a custom one that is made just for the rear. So I use the, the, the one same as the front because the, where it screws into the Brembo caliper is exactly the same as the front and where it attaches to the car is exactly the same. All I've done is I've ran it up. As you can see the wheel arch liner, there's kind of a gap here where the sensor wire goes through and then the screw in it. So I've just looped it around the back, put the screw in. This just stops it from coming forward and fouling onto the shock or anything. So, I mean, it's been on a while. I keep checking on it. It's not rubbing or anything, so it looks fine. So I just rooted it up and round to the caliper, to, to the car, sorry. Um, but yeah, we'll, what we'll do now is we'll flip the camera around to the back. I'll go over the ABS sensor problem that you get. I'll show you all the bracket as best I can. And yeah, we'll go from there. Right, round the back, it's not the easiest to show you what you need to do. I'll try and talk you through it as best I can. 
For a start off, the same as before, don't put the pads in. Leave the pads out, push the pistons all the way back out, just because you need to leave this disc out. So if you've got studs as well, you will need to take them out because the bolt comes through from this way. I'll show you this side of the bracket, I'll spin it around and show you the other side of the bracket, but what you can see is you have to bolt this caliper through this way. It's threaded inside here. So what you need to do is you want the disc off, you want the OEM caliper off, but the pad carrier on. I'll show you in a minute because this bracket bolts to the pad carrier, but not the caliper. So you want the pad carrier on the other side um, and screw it up to this bracket, but leave it loose on the other side. So just put the thread through just a little bit. So this is all loose and wobbly. And then what you want to do is bolt this through with the spacer onto this bracket. Once you've bolted it onto this bracket and tightened it all up, then you can basically cock the disc in into the caliper and bring it round. It, I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit awkward, but it's possible. So yeah, if you've got studs in your hub, you need them removed. OEM caliper off, but the bracket on, loosely tighten it, which I'm going to show you around the other side in a minute. Tighten these up tight then get the disc in, then work on the other side on tightening, basically tightening the bracket up on the other side and putting the OEM caliper back on. That is the order you have to do it in. Now, the other thing that we had that we need to talk about is the, the ABS sensor here. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna strip it out to show you, I'll just have to talk you through it as best I can. What happens is the ABS sensor goes into the hub just here. Now, the caliper clears the sensor but will not clear the plug. That is your problem that you have. The plug is too big where it goes on the ABS sensor, the caliper will hit the plug. So what you have to do is put the sensor in, I cut a little square section out of the back of it, and then I de-pin the plug. So I didn't break the plug or anything, you can get the tools and you can de-pin it. Yeah, bear, bear in mind before you do this, take a note of which wire goes to which pin. So look at the plug, look at the way it fits onto the sensor, Take a note down of, or a picture or whatever you want to do of which sensor is basically like top and bottom. Once you've done that, then de-pin the plug. After you've de-pinned the plug, then you want to plug it directly onto the ABS sensor. Now the next bit depends on which way you want to do it. What I use, we have this epoxy two-part glue. I put a little bit in, not too much that I wouldn't never be able to get it out, but enough that it'd hold it still. So basically, I slid the terminals onto each pin like the plug would but without the plug so the wires are directly on there i then the cut the square that i'd cut out on this back side i pushed the wires this way a bit so they weren't fouling i then put epoxy glue into the into the center itself where the pins are to hold them and then i basically just went around with the tape so all you're doing is the terminals are going straight onto the pins and then bending around this way and then taped up and glued up and then come around this side of the bracket and go up I've been running this for months now and I've had no problems. It works completely fine. But yeah, that is the problem you do get with the back. You cannot plug the ABS sensor plug onto the ABS sensor itself. So you basically, you can do it multiple ways, whichever way you want to do it. But yeah, you just have to basically remove the, the plug and go straight onto the pins. So that will sort that. Now I'm going to spin around to the other side and I'll show you where the bracket mounts. Right, so this is the other side. You can't really see a lot. One other problem we'll see that I didn't know until today is that the way it sits, it seems to have cut into the CV gate on both sides. Um, I'm probably going to have to take it off and maybe grind it down a bit or move it around a little bit and at the same time change these CV gators because see there where it seems like it's been slightly sitting on it. Um, it's basically cut into it and some of the CV grease is coming out so I will have to sort that. But yeah, here you get the extra long bolt. This is just where the bolt would usually go straight onto the hub there and it go through to the pad carrier. Uh, the pad carrier itself is what's got the threads in it. So it, all it literally does is, is this sits against the hub and then this is a longer bolt that goes all the way through into the pad carrier on the OEM pad carrier basically. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward how it fits. Like I said, this is a bit of a problem. I'll have to sort some out, but there's nothing I can really do about that um, other than grind it down. So if you are gonna get this kit, I'd probably just go and get like a little grinder or something and probably just trim the bracket down just a little bit more or something like that. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, hopefully you got all the information you needed. If you're looking to do this swap, if there's anything you need to know or anything I missed, just drop it down in the comments and I'll get back to you. But yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.